Hi everybody, my name is Angie, and today I'll be talking about week two's topic, which is primitive art, drawing, and painting. The first thing that was discussed in the video was that art is a reflection of a time and a place. This essentially means that art can be studied to tell us about different times, places, or communities. Um, it may tell us about the culture of the person who is um, creating the art. It may tell us, um, you know, details about how they're living, um, things along those lines. So we can use this to determine more information about the people who are creating the art. Um, the earliest origins of cave paintings are assumed to be very childlike, very basic, um, but when you look into it further, you can most definitely tell that um, these are very complex and detailed, um, and that the artists who are creating these are not unskilled in any way. Next, we discussed why migration patterns matter. Um, we figured out that migration patterns matter because it helps us understand who creates the art that we're seeing. Um, you can um, see that the art is moving with the group of people. So if a group of people is moving, you know, their art will be in the caves, you know, that they're leaving behind. And it will continue that way with all of the groups that are moving through a specific area. Next, we discuss positive and negative handprints, which are both shown on this slide. Um, a positive handprint is where the hand is put into paint and then an impression is made on a surface. And then a negative handprint is the opposite, where the hand is put onto the surface and then paint is blown onto the hand, typically through a reed, which leaves behind a silhouette. Next, we discussed artist materials. So artist materials have remained consistently the same since they were first created. Um, they're very similar now to how they were back then. Um, so drawing materials are typically um, dry medium-based products, such as graphite pencils, um, colored pencils, charcoal, and pastels. Um, these drawings are typically very small and intimate, um, but do not hold detail from a distance. Painting is the opposite. Um, it does hold detail from a distance. Um, primitive paints were made mostly of earth pigments. Um, this was iron oxide, iron silicate, or copper ore. Copper ore. Um, and then there, there were binders that would make the um, the paint into an actual liquid. So the pigment would be pigment would be mixed with things such as animal fat, vegetable oil, blood, things like that to make it a water to make it liquidy. The last thing that I will be discussing today is the three different styles of art. Um, these are representational, abstract, and non-objective. The first one displayed on this slide is an example of representational. Um, this is representing things that are found in the visual world. Um, this example is sunflowers. Um, this is most definitely something that we see in the real world, and it, it, it appears in the image as it appears in real life. Next is abstract painting. Um, that is art that is focused on nature and color. Um, this is supposed to represent something that is believable, but um, there's something done within the art that makes it so it's atypical. Um, in this specific example is the second one, Star Starry Night. Um, you can see that the stars in the sky are kind of swirly and makes it not look like the typical sky that we see. Finally is non-objective. That is just an art that is rec um, that is recognizable um, parts of the visual world, they're all removed. So it's nothing that you would recognize in your surroundings. And it's something that the artist typically creates themselves. That is all I'll be sharing with you for week two. And thank you so much for watching.